We're, We're live. live. Okay, wonderful. Good evening, everyone. Am I speaking loud enough? A little bit louder. A little bit louder. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our Bible study this evening. So, we are moving forward with discipleship and church growth. The last two weeks, we have been talking about discipleship and the responsibilities behind discipleship. Understanding that you are a disciple and understanding that as being a disciple comes discipline. Discipline is none other than governing yourselves or being of self-control in order to follow God's plan. Because if you are a disciple, then you understand that you are a follower of God. Being that we are Christians, being that we are talking about Jesus Christ, then as believers, as the body of Christ, then as disciples, we are followers of God. So understanding that as followers of God, we cannot just govern ourselves according to however we want and however we want to do and however we think is right. Because there is a way that seems right to each and every man, but that doesn't mean that it is right. Mm -hmm. So we understood those disciplines and we understood that it takes work. Why? Because everybody is not on one accord. Some, you know, may have more maturity than others. Mm -hmm. But the whole focus of it is to be centered on God first, reestablishing our relationship with God first, and then from there allowing the Holy Spirit to work within us to hopefully change some of the stuff that we have in us that is not pleasing unto God, right? Yes. In order to live a centered life on God, that means that we no longer are ourselves or owners of ourselves, but yet we have now turned our life over to God. We are now being submissive to him, understanding that in our last conversation, in our last discussion with Bible study, we understood what bearing the cross was, right? And everybody has a cross to bear. Bearing that cross means that you are now submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and to God, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so there was a custom, a Roman custom that would have all of those criminals that were persecuted that were to be crucified to carry their own cross. That's why Jesus carried his own cross. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't being submissive to the Roman law. He was being submissive unto God the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Because he was sent here to do the work and to do the will of the one who sent him. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then understanding we all have a cross to bear, it means that we have to now submit ourselves and center ourselves now on God. Mm -hmm. All right? That was just a quick recap. Yeah. Let us pray. God, we come thanking you this evening for allowing us to come out and to learn more about you. God, we come thanking you for being with us all day long, Lord, being our help, Lord God, being our guide and being our safety as we travel up and down these roads. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord God, I ask that in this Bible study, the Lord God, you Enlighten us, Father. Allow us to learn a little bit more about you and to leave here knowing a little bit more than what we knew before. Mm -hmm. And God, we give you all thanks, all praise, and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So now we are on to our new lesson. I keep looking back because it sounds like somebody may have been out there. It sounds like somebody knocking on the door, trying to pull the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it unlocked? Yeah. Okay, it doesn't, well, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right. So now we have our new study guides for this evening, mm -hmm. and we're just going to jump right on in. Our basic discussion will be on church growth, the biblical model. All right, so now we're going to focus in on the church growth side of it. Now that we have the people side of it, now we're going to talk about how we're growing the people. How are we going to bring the people in for church growth? All right. And so our main scripture this evening is based off of First Thessalonians. I'll be doing a little from chapter one, and then it'll be three, 
chapter 3, verse 12, all the way to chapter 4, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you want to um, get your Bibles and go ahead and start flipping to 1 Thessalonians, please do so. So when we talk about church growth, what is church growth? It's kingdom building. It's kingdom building. So can you go a little further into that? Basically taking the message of the church and just growing it within the community, um, around the church, and then just growing it as far as we can. Okay, so it's about spreading the gospel? Spreading the gospel. So it's first about spreading the gospel. Okay, so what's church growth? What do you think church growth is? Bringing more people into God. Okay, so it's bringing more people into God. So, all right, so we've got a couple of things going. Janie said that it's about spreading the gospel, preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel to first the community because it starts at home and then from there abroad. And then you, Uncle Jack, is saying bringing more people in. Making okay. Disciples. All right, that's a good opening. So um, it's a book that I'm reading right now and it's based off of my conference studies and it's from um, Biblical Church Growth is the title of the book comes from Gary McIntosh and his definition of it says an effective evangelism not methodology for increasing membership. So can anybody explain that effective evangelism is what he's calling defining church growth to be is effective evangelism not methodology for increasing membership um basically there's no set way into spreading the gospel bringing in people into the church or making disciples it's just the fact that you're going out there meeting the people at their you know at, at their at their I guess on we're level. on their level, okay. um, like, you know, like Jesus did. He didn't mm -hmm. just go get people that were already educated in, like, you know, priests and in the word. He went out to, like, you know, where the people were at, were at the drunks, the prostitutes, just wherever the people were who were in need of the word, meeting them there. Yes. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. So it's not necessarily a set order of doing things, but it's more about spreading the gospel, mm -hmm. as you said, mm -hmm. right? But we'll later understand that it's an equal balance. Not only do you want to spread the gospel, but it's about getting the numbers as well. So it's not all about, you know, the, it's, it's about the quality, but it's about the quantity as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And we'll start to see that with God in the biblical um, sense of it, when we look into the scriptures. So Janie basically said that it's not really a set method of doing something over and over again. Okay, you start here mm -hmm. and then it's B and C and D, but more or less going and spreading the gospel or being that light mm -hmm. because Jesus was the light, right? Yes. He went to those that was sick, right? Because mm -hmm. he said those that are well need no physician. That's right. I came for the ones that are sick, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. the ones that are sinners. Yeah. So then therefore he would go to, you know, the, the drunkards. He would go to the you know, um the uh, unclean. Those that are unclean. He would go to the prostitutes, you know, just to save them. Mm -hmm. Right, not necessarily doing what they he wasn't doing what they were doing, mm -hmm. but he came to show them a better way. Mm -hmm. So then, therefore, as disciples, we have to live our life in such a way that we can show someone else there's a better way. Yeah. Let me say that again. We as Christians have to discipline ourselves in such a way that is godly that those that see us can recognize the God in us. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but be able to receive it when we speak to them that, hey, there's another way than the way that you're going. Yeah, but you know, church folks don't like to get their hands dirty. They only want to go to other church folks. Oh, wow. We don't like to get our hands dirty. <laughs> no. Nope. That's the word. Amen. It's, it's the truth. We don't like to get our hands dirty. Mm -mm. We want to be right here home and comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, around people that we know, yep. laugh with, eat with, you know, we don't want to deal with nobody else. Why? Because that's work. 
Yeah. That's yeah. work. This Christian life is work. Yeah. Bottom line, it's all work. Yep. All right? So in the world, you have to work. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then you don't eat. You know, you won't have a house to live in. Mm -hmm. You won't have all of these, you know, accommodations that you can have. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same in the Christian life. You still have to work. Yep. Right? Pastor still has to work, you know, he still has to preach the gospel, he still has to pastor and be, a, you know, a shepherd to the flock. Mm -hmm. We all have to work. Work mm -hmm. in our gifts, yep. work in our talents. What I'm good at, Jenny ain't good at. That's right. You know, what I'm good at, you know, my mama might not be good at. But whatever she's good at, that's what she works in, yep. you know? Jenny's good with all of this technological stuff. <laughs> Not everybody is technologically sound, which is why you don't see them recording anything, you know, on you know, on the switchboards, you don't see them doing <laughs> nothing on Facebook, online, you don't see none of that, right? Because that's not their area. Yeah. So like I said before, once we reestablish ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to work within us, we then can discover what our gifts and what our talents are to better use them for the upbuilding of the kingdom. That's right. All right? Mm -hmm. So it's an effective evangelism. Mm -hmm. So now if we're working on ourselves, we understand that we're in training for God to be better disciples so that we can make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. Then it has to start with evangelism. That's all it is, work. Mm -hmm. Telling somebody about somebody, about somebody, about somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Work. Using your personal situation or using your life, your testimony, you know, to let somebody know, hey, look, I've been there and I've done that. Mm -hmm. This is what happened for me. This is what I did. Might not work for them, but at least you have, you know, started the spot. You know, you've engaged with them to let them know, hey, there's a better way. If you hang in there, if you just hold on, I promise you, you'll see it better tomorrow. That's right. An effective evangelism, not methodology for increasing membership. So it ain't all about the way it needs to go. It's not all about the flow of it. Understanding there needs to be some order mm -hmm. because God works in order. Yes. But as far as effective evangelism, everybody does that in their own special way. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. All right. So then moving on, um, it says there aren't actual scriptures that tell us about church growth. On the contrary, one can formulate a positive argument using scriptures to show how God's intention was and is to grow the church. So it doesn't necessarily say, you know, God, you know, there was church growth, you know, here, mm -hmm. but you can kind of deduct, you know, through deductive reasoning mm -hmm. and reading the scriptures will easily show you that God was about increasing his church. Mm -hmm. He was about the people, and he was about, you know, getting more people to listen. To listen. Mm -hmm. That's all it was, spreading the news. Mm -hmm. He walked from east to west, north to south. That's all he did was spread the news. Yep. Right? right? And because of it, all of these things was added. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Sounds scriptural. Right? When you put God first, first. You know, then all these other things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Same in your spiritual life, same with your spiritual walk. If we're talking about discipleship and church growth, mm -hmm. we first have to look to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we, long as we focus and look to God, then all the other things should yeah. be added unto you. Yeah. Should yeah. is the key word here. Should. Because if we're in line with God and, you know, and if we're doing our part, then it should come. Growth should come. What is it? 
not, not what we expect. You know, might take God a long time. You know. Well. But it's coming. But it's coming. It's coming. But it's coming. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the next point, Christ Himself said He will build His church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Comes from Matthew sixteen ten. We're not reading it. Okay. But this is one of the first signs to where Christ was continuing his purpose for being here. And it was to build the church. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's going to build the church, you, I mean, if you're building something, you know, it's, it's not meant to be small. No. And so in this instance, God building the church is not to be small. All right? Mm -hmm. Not small-minded at all. God's creation was not small. Yeah. So in no means will we think God building his church is going to be small. Okay? Yeah. All right. So then going to Matthew 18, very familiar scriptures, 18 through 20, the main focus here is to make disciples first, then teaching and baptizing them. Because the, the scripture says to go and make disciples, mm -hmm. right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right? Getting them to obey the commands and all the teachings that I have taught you. Mm -hmm. And remember, I will be with you even unto the end of the world, mm -hmm. even unto the end of the age. Okay? So not only is he focused and his purpose is to fulfill God's word. Now, as he has made disciples, guess what? He wants us to be focused. He wants us to do the exact same thing. So it's the exact same model. God came, he taught, he preached, right? Mm -hmm. He spread the gospel in order to build his church. Yeah. Yes, he chose, he handpicked his apostles. Yes, yes. he did. He handpicked the 12 disciples. He sure did. But he had to start somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And so in starting somewhere with those 12, he taught, you know, that he preached. Mm -hmm. He showed the example. He showed how to love, you know. Mm -hmm. He showed how to pray. And then taught them the same thing. Mm -hmm. So now on this journey, he's doing the exact same. So now it's a model. Yep. He started the model. He's the leader of the model. He's the head. So now as disciples, we are to do the exact same thing. Understanding that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Why? Because he said he's going to be right here mm -hmm. as we are fulfilling his purpose in God. As he is fulfilling his purpose in God. Okay? Because mm -hmm. remember, our life is not our own anymore. Nope. And so as we have been called into his body, as we have been called the church, we now are his. Mm -hmm. So now his purpose becomes our purpose. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talking about discipleship and church growth. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Moving right along. Um, in the book of Acts, starting um, at the second chapter, 41 through 42, this is talking about the day of Pentecost and what happened. At the day of Pentecost, fire came down, the Holy Spirit, and power. Mm -hmm. And all who was assembled there heard the gospel of the Lord. And all that was assembled there received that same power. Right? Mm -hmm. And it says 3,000, about 3,000 was added. Yeah. To the church. That's a lot of people. Imagine 3,000. 3,000 people can't even get in here. It'd be upstairs and downstairs in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. and On top of each all other. Of, yeah. Right. All of these auxiliary rooms. We could all sit on top of one another. Power. Imagine. Power to the roof. Yes. Imagine that. Just preaching the word of the Lord. Mm. Just preaching the word of the Lord. Yes, and by preaching the word of the, of the Lord, effective evangelism, 3,000 people were added. Woo! So there's another example of how it's not just quality, 
but it's quantity. Mm -hmm. Because he wants the people, you know? But then he also wants there to be some discipline with these people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Right? A lot of people to to train, Mm -hmm. to equip, to teach, to preach, you know? All of that. Work. It's it's work. But the effectiveness of evangelism grown 3,000 people into the body of Christ. All right? Acts goes on. It's it's so many in Acts. Acts 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. When John and Peter preached the gospel. They got mad, thought, you know, they were being blasphemous, so they locked them in prison. Mm -hmm. But they didn't stop the gospel. Because the Bible says that 5,000, 5,000, just with John and Peter preaching, were added to the church. Mm -hmm. 5,000. They was locked up. Locked up. For Jesus' sake. But because those they preached, those that heard, Mm -hmm. believed, 5,000 was added. Right? But you got to be committed. You got to be focused. You have, you know, you have to have that desire. Mm -hmm. Remember, they no longer are working for themselves, but they're working for the Lord. Right? They were called to be one of God's chosen. Your mom says, as an evangelist, we encourage and build the church, not any particular membership, but individuals with changed hearts, desiring to follow righteousness, and desiring to encourage others to live and love. I can't see the rest of it. I can't see the rest of it. I guess love is God. Okay. Yeah. All right. Desire, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about desire. You have to have that desire. You have to have that want. Mm-hmm. Same thing, you know, going back to what Janie said. It's not, you know, a certain method to it because we all have our way. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. We have our own special way of connecting to one another. Yeah. And so it, through effective evangelism, just like Mama was saying too, you know, you have to have that desire mm-hmm. to spread the word, to have that gospel, you know, and to be centered on God. All right? Mm -hmm. Continuing on, um, in Acts 5.14, this is where they start to introduce another language. It's where the language starts to change. Before it would be, you know, the church Mm -hmm. or the people of God or the believers. But now at this point, the language starts to change to the multitude. And how much is a multitude? It's more than you can count, I guess. You can't even count a multitude. It's a multitude of people. When he went and preached on the mountain, it was a multitude of people. Thousands of people Mm -hmm. were there on the mountain as he preached. Right? Mm -hmm. So now we start to see a change in the lingo. And the multitudes, meaning many, as a sign of growth. All right? So now we're using the multitudes to grow. So still talking about church growth. All right? Lastly, um, at 16 and 5, because of the preaching, because of the effective evangelism, Look what happens. Other churches are starting to become developed mm-hmm. under that same Christian faith. Mm-hmm. So, so excuse me. So, if they're being developed, that means that it's more people being added mm-hmm. to the church, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a multitude of people, you know, whether it's a handful, it's still people mm-hmm. being added to the church. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. So, even though it doesn't black and white say it, you can easily deduct through the scriptures that God is concerned about his people Mm -hmm. so much that he wants to add to his to his church Mm -hmm. right you're right not only that but he's concerned about 
your spiritual being. Because now you got to have a, a certain way. Mm -hmm. You have to have some self-control. You have to have some discipline. Right? Yeah. We can't just be looking any kind of way. You know? And expect somebody to believe us yeah. when we come to talk about God. We can't be acting a certain kind of way and expect people to believe us when we're talking about God. We can't be on the fence. Nope. Though we are. Yes. Lord, help our unbelief. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us are on the fence because we don't believe. We, we don't see, have enough faith. Yeah, we don't. But see all it. of that comes through maturity. Yeah. So if you're not allowing yourself to mature and to develop or reestablish that relationship with God, mm -hmm. then you're gonna see the tide. Right? You right. you you're gonna see the tide. Mm -hmm. And God don't want that. And God don't want that. Either hot or cold, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing lukewarm, because he'll spit you out. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, um, lastly, again in chapter twenty-one of Acts, that same by um, that same book, the language changes again. So now they're using myriads. Myriads is another name for thousands of people. So just to give you some brief examples of church growth mm -hmm. in the scriptures. How you can see where God has a desire to grow his church. Mm -hmm. Since he said it, now he must do it. And so now we can back it up to see 3,000 people added, 5,000 people added. It went on to just say the multitude and the myriad. Because mm -hmm. you can't number them all. Between women, men, and children. Yeah. And most of the time, the women won't ever discuss. Nope, and the children yeah. forget it. Yep, just so then you're just talking about the men. Well, what about the women and the children? That's where you get into the multitudes yep. and those myriads. Because it's thousands of people. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. All doing the work of the Lord, growing the church. All right? So now let's get into 1 Thessalonians and see about this model that Paul has for the people. 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to start at the first chapter. Mm. All right. Are y'all there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start at verse 2, skipping the introduction. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. I'm just going to stop right there. Okay? So Paul opens up with a letter of greeting them, but also a letter of thanks to them. Mm -hmm. Why? Why was he doing that? Because they were following. But I don't understand imitating. Mm -hmm. Is he? He's not a. Ne it's not used as a negative way, is it? No, okay. it's not used as a. So negative basically, way. they were so, just doing the same. They were doing what they had saw the other Christians doing. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Paul is writing back to them after being persecuted and being prosecuted. Mm -hmm at this point for spreading the gospel to let them know, hey, I've heard your works, you know, and I'm thankful that you are continuing mm -hmm. in the work, being imitators of us. Okay, being imitators of us because we have showed you the way, mm -hmm. you know, to discipleship 
Now you have taken on that same model and have grown the church. You have continued in the work. All right? That's what he's saying. And you became imitators of us for the Lord's sake and of the Lord. Verse 6, that's what it says, mm -hmm. and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction. Remember this prosecution. Mm -hmm. Okay? With joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in that land. To all the believers. You became an example of how to be. To all of them in that land. Okay? Talking about discipleship and church growth. Mm-hmm. This is one spreading good news, not one spreading bad news. Mm -hmm. Because they say bad news travels faster, right? Yeah. yeah. But not here. Not in this particular letter. Mm -hmm. Paul is showing his appreciation for not only being imitators, right? Mm -hmm. So now that means you're disciplining yourself, you're self-controlled, you are, you know, living what you believe, mm -hmm. living what you believe. Right? And now you've become the example. Mm -hmm. Because now you are helping others. You are showing others. You are teaching others in that same way. Alright? Mm -hmm. So now let's move on. Um, so let's go to chapter 3. Chapter 3 starting at the 12th verse. As it is written. There. You want me to read it? Let's see. All right, so now by chapter three, Paul is still writing, Paul is still talking to the people of Thessalonica, all right? But in this particular part of the letter, let's see. He has imparted a prayer. Start at 11, Jamie. Okay. Now may God and... Wait a minute. Okay. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow with love for one another and for everyone, just as we do for you. May he make your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, with all his saints. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. So what is Paul's prayer here? Um, basically that he wants them to continue to do the work that they've been doing and, okay. and that their love continues to overflow as they've been shown. Okay. Um, and that God blesses them for what they've been doing. Okay. So one thing um, that Paul has prayed for them was to abound in love. Mm -hmm. Does your, I don't know if your um, version says that, but mine says to abound and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do to you, right? Increase and overflow. Over, yours says overflow, yeah. okay? About overflow, yes. Mm -hmm. To increase, right? Mm -hmm. So increase means what? To add. Yeah, yeah. You're increasing, right? So you're adding, right? Mm -hmm. And to abound in love means not only are you adding, but it's of an overflow. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you adding, you know, Paul isn't just praying for them to add, but he's praying for the overflow mm -hmm. of love. Why love? Because God is love. Because God is love, right? Mm -hmm. Why else love, though? Because there is so much hate, I guess, I don't know. All right, because God is love. God is the source of all, right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, who is our example? God. God. God is our example, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not only that, but it says in John 15, 13, 
you know, um, that there is no greater love yeah. than one who would lay down his life for his friend, right? Yeah. There is no greater love, mm -hmm. right? So then in that same basis, that was the exact example mm -hmm. God set for us. God was willing to lay down his life for us, right? Your mom says, the church is the family of believers. True believers seek the knowledge of God to be able to set examples for others to follow. Not what we say, but it's our example that teaches the way. It's when we live in love for one another. Amen. And that's the example. Them mm -hmm. imitators, right? Yep. Right? Yep. It's not enough that you say it, right? But you got to yep. do it. Yep. You ain't enough to talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. Yep. That's where your discipline comes in. That's where that self-control comes in. Because now that you realize you no longer are yourself but of God, mm -hmm. that means that you just can't live any kind of way. That's right. It's the same with, with, with you know, people. You can't treat them any kind of way and think it's all right. It's not all right. So then, therefore, you can't, you know, live your life you can't live your best life without love. Riding the fence, right. Yeah. Not without love, too. Yeah. Amen. You can't yeah. live your best life mm -hmm. without love. Mm -hmm. And it ain't just for Mount Island. Nope. nope. But it's everybody else. Because mm -hmm. as Paul said, not just for one another, but for all, mm -hmm. as Paul did for them. Mm -hmm. Paul of all of them, right? Mm hmm so if we're going to be the imitator, and if we're going to be that example, then it just can't be at home. Nope. We know what you do. Yeah. We see each other enough, you know. We have contact with, with you know, one another. I, you know, I know just some of Jamie's tendencies, things yeah. of that nature. We're comfortable. And it also means that new people coming to the church, we can't just shun them. We have to just, you know, show them love as well. Right. So then how do we do that? How do we, I mean, you know, so how do we do that? As a body of believers, as Mount Olive, how do we do that? How can this be applicable to the church? Well, first we need to welcome the stranger because that's one thing that we learned from the Old Testament that, you know, God wiped out a whole nation because they, they were unwelcoming the strangers. Mm -hmm. So we don't welcome the strangers that come in. What well, we do, we think he going to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So... We have to be welcoming, right? Yeah. Sometimes it might mean not only welcoming, but continue to be hospitable. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you see them one time and then that's it. Yeah. You get a name, you get an address, a telephone number, and we don't do nothing with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we got to reach out. We, we you know, file it in a Rolodex and yeah. then we just, you know, we keep it moving. Yeah. If they come back again, we'll welcome them again, but then it's that same old thing. Yeah, we got to call and check on them. And, Have to call you know, and check you know, on them. Visit them. Go visit, yeah. you know. Perhaps even pick them up yeah. if they need to be picked up. I mm -hmm. remember a time, you know, it was me and Mary Allen for a while. Mm -hmm. Mary Allen come and get me in. Look, that's a funny woman to me. I love her to death. All the stories that we have traveling back and forth on the mm -hmm. road. But when I, you know, didn't have a car or, or no transportation at all, but I knew, you know, I needed to be here at the church, call Mary. Yeah. Not only that, or she would, you know, she Make would call me, hey, you need, you need for me to come pick you up? I'm on the way. Yep. No hesitation. No hesitation. That's like Richard and Lisa, when um, before I started going here, I just knew the lady would come get Richard in the car to come take him to church. <laughs> And he was like, well, Lisa got to come. She come to get me to go to church. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, good. You need to go to church. <laughs> and so, you know, it just grew from there. And it grew from there. Yeah. See? You know? Mm -hmm. Several things. It ain't hard. Nothing hard about it. Right? Mm -hmm. But if you're going to make disciples, that means we got to care about some folks. Yeah. We can't just care about the ones that we know. We got to yeah. care about some people. That's true. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Great. You... You live around here? Yeah. Are you from here? Okay, then, you know, we'll, you know, get to know somebody. Yeah. Don't you know, be maybe, afraid. you know, we need to partner up and have somebody, you know, be their partner and just phone them. Yeah. Once a week or so. 
hey, you know, this is Reverend yeah. Allen. Yeah. I was just checking in on you, see how you was doing, how your week been so far. Yeah. Amen. But it well, if you didn't know, we've got such and such going on church this week. You know, I, it would be wonderful to see you. Mm-hmm. You know, please come out. That's how you keep them engaged. Yeah. That's how you keep them in the know. Half the time, we don't know. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, if you don't see me half of the time, it's because I don't know. Not because it's not printed in the bulletin, or because I govern myself as much as I can according to the to what's printed in our church bulletin. Mm-hmm. But then oftentimes it's because I didn't know. Yeah. And how many fall victim to that I didn't know circumstance? Well, that's why I try now to make sure people know. Well, Janie, it's not. I didn't I know. say that. I know, know, I know, but that's why I, I said that's. Say that. I know, I know, but I said that's that why. I, yeah. But I, you know, before then. Yeah. You know, before all of this technological advancement that we have yeah. now, how many have fallen victim to that? I don't know situation. Yeah. And that's what the, that's the reason why I started doing like this because I saw a lot of people didn't know stuff, so right. I felt like, you know, might as well just start emailing people or texting them if I have to. So. You know, because yeah. a lot of people miss out. There you go. Be accountable. Have to be accountable. You know, can't just let them. Yeah, fall by the wayside. Around. Yeah, fall by the wayside. You won't ever see them anymore. You know, we forever asking, "Well, have you seen? Have you talked to? Yeah. You know, I ain't seen them in a while. Yeah. Right. Be like that Canton spiritual song on the old man. Yeah, you looking for the old man and he done yeah, found him a choir. Okay. So. I'm crying. He's singing in it. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so the second thing. So, going back to Thessalonians, Paul prayed for love. Mm-hmm. Love was the first thing he prayed for. And then the second thing he prayed for was holiness. Mm-hmm. Some Some versions may say sanctification. So, what is that? I said I was gonna ask you to be sanctified. What does that mean? To sanctify yourself, sanctification. You want to take a stab at it? Is it when you submit? Mm, yeah, because you are submitting when you, you know, under sanctification, you are submitting, but it's simply being set apart. Okay. To make it easy, it's just being set apart. Okay. So he's praying for your love. And now he's praying for your sanctification. Set apart. Continuing to be set apart. So right? not falling back into your simple ways. Instead of falling back into them okay. ways. Okay. Okay. You know them ways. Sometimes it's hard. Mm-hmm. We, we know them ways. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People that's trying to live an honest life, you know, maybe been, you know, was used to stealing and stuff and, you know. Yeah. Don't want to backslide. No, because it's easy to fall back. It's easy to fall back, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So as believers, we also have to understand that there's no temptation that we can't overcome. Yeah. Because God himself overcame them. Mm -hmm. And he gives us the power to to overcome them. He always does. He always does. But he also gives us the choices to whether we do it or don't. Mm -hmm. Whether we do it or don't. Yeah. Right. So Paul also wants you to be sanctified, to be set apart. Right? Yeah. Okay, because you, you, you know, because birds of a feather flock together. Mm-hmm. And if you keep hanging with them birds, then sooner or later, that's going to rub off on you. <laughs> I like that. He's going to eat worms. 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 I like that. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. But look also to what I have. It only comes with spiritual maturity. Mm-hmm. The more centered you become, the easier it is to say no. Right? And that's where your self-control and your discipline comes in. Yep. But it requires Spiritual maturity. Yeah. yeah. How do you gain spiritual maturity? Centering yourself on God and as a body of believers, mm-hmm. coming to church. Yeah. Yeah. Being a part, participating, listening, you know, being under sound doctrine. 
sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Because anybody can tell you anything, but if you don't know the word for yourself, then they can get one over on you. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's just basically developing your relationship with God. Right. Okay? That's why so many people are calling in to get their prayer cloths and they they that holy get water. their holy waters, you know, the mm. little bottle of holy yeah. sprinkles, you know, <laughs> sound doctrine. It ain't even a bottle, it's like a little silver plastic. I don't water. even know, I didn't order the it. The miracle oh. holy water. I turned the channel. I thought it was funny. Like, people oh, spending money on that. Right. Leave anything. Okay, right. Yeah. Like Mary's tears. Mm -hmm. Really? I don't know. But yes, okay? So it only comes with spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. All right? So then it only when the desire to please God becomes our main focus of the Christian life that growth mm -hmm. will take place. Mm -hmm. So it's only when you desire, right? Yeah. God is always willing. God is always able. God will always equip. If you lack anything, ask him. He said he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that desire. Yep, he ain't gonna force and if it you on get you. that desire, he's not going to keep you in the same place. You got to go somewhere. Yep. Right? Yep. Once you learn the lesson, once you understand two plus two is four. Gotta go Nobody on. can take that away from you. That's right. But not only that, now it's time to move. You know, now that you done got the addition down, you can do the subtraction now, mm -hmm. now you can do some multiplication now, mm -hmm. and some division. But you're not just gonna stay in addition. You have to keep advancing. You gotta keep growing. So as your desire grows, the more your faith grows, right? Mm -hmm. The more your discipline grows, the more the, your maturity grows, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The and the more you desire to talk to God, and He will talk to you. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Because conversations are two way. Yep. One is talking, and one is listening. And it always, it ain't always you talking. Nope. And when I say talking, giving off a list of demands. That's right. Lord, I need this bill to be paid. Lord, if you could just make a way for me, mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow, then I promise I'll do this. Lord, I need for you to, you know, move on this behalf. Lord, God, I need this. I need that. I need this. Can you do that? Yeah. Right? Got to give God time to talk. Got to give him time to talk. But rather, our conversation should be, Lord, you know, help me to value my days. Mm -hmm. Help me to understand what it is that you want me to do. Help me to fulfill your purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. Whatever it may be. Right? But then you gotta allow God time to speak to you. It ain't always gonna be, you know, if I ask a question, you're gonna get the answer right there. Yeah. But you have to allow God time to speak to you. Spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about discipleship and church growth. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in Paul's model, we first have to start with love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then love, holiness. Mm -hmm. All right? Holiness being sanctified, set apart, all of that. Mm -hmm. All right? Following his model. Following the model in 1 Thessalonians. To be holy. To be set apart. All right? And continuing the faith as imitators and examples. Mm -hmm. All right? So the next thing was um, Paul's motive or motivation for growing a church. All right, so that's in chapter four, starting at the first verse. It says, finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Do you have a different... Do you have a different translation, Janie? Um, it's pretty much the same. Additionally, then, brothers, brothers and sisters, we ask and encourage you in the Lord Jesus that as you have received instructions from us on how you should live and please God as you are doing, do this even more. Um, 
do this yeah do this even more do this even more yeah mine says do so more and more so if you're doing it more and more you're increasing right yeah, yeah. you're growing you're growing in the church mm -hmm. if that's what you're doing right? right it says we ask and urge you to continue to walk how you ought to walk mm -hmm. and to please God, right? Yeah. Just as you are doing. He says to do that, continue to do that. That ought to be your motivation because you are imitators and examples. And so now realizing that's what you are, understanding that and appreciating that, continue to do it more and more. Mm -hmm. Increase in that. That should be the drive, to increase in it more and more, meaning love and holiness, right? To increase in it more and more. As God had did, mm -hmm. we are to do. So that ought to be our motivation. It says Paul urges them to understand the need to live a life unto God. Mm -hmm. I kept saying it. Remember, we are not of our own. We have laid down our life to pick up God. Yeah. We're bearing that cross. Okay? And now oftentimes that means doing some work. So let's continue on in chapter 4. Let's see. Uh, verse 2. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Here we go with sanctification again. Mm -hmm. That you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Right? So not only is he praying for love and holiness to abound in us, to increase in us more and more, but he gives the reason and the motive behind it is because we no longer are of ourselves, but because we are of God. Mm -hmm. So now you are urged to continue to live a holy life. Mm -hmm. How are you to live a holy life? He says it by sustaining from sexual immoralities. And by using self-control. Mm -hmm. There's that discipline again. Self-control. Alright? In holiness and honor. Not honor of yourself, but honor to God. Alright? Mm -hmm. Not like the Gentiles who don't know God. Well, we are Gentiles today. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. You know, if you start hanging around that mentality, eventually that same thing will rub off on you. Mm -hmm. If you're not spiritually mature enough to handle it. If you don't know when to hold them, fold them, walk away and run. <laughs> okay? Uh-huh, you got the song now? Okay. But if you don't know how to do those things, Eventually, what they say, you lay down with dogs, you come Get up with fleas. fleas. So then our motivation should be that of that. Just because we are now gods. We have been called to be set apart from those Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright. So let's see if we can conclude about four minutes. One should strive to live better lives to God. Even the people of Thessalonica didn't always uphold their beliefs, but stood firm in the upholding the right life. Mm -hmm. And we can, and we too can say the same thing, because we are perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody is Nobody's perfect. perfect. We can agree to that, right? Sure. Every now and then, you know, we backslide, we fall off, and we come short, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing new under the sun. They did the same exact thing. But you have to stand firm in how you live. Mm -hmm. Stand firm in it. You might, but don't stay there. You know, if you backslide, okay. But don't stay there. 
repent, ask God for forgiveness, and keep going on living the life that you're supposed to lead. Yep. Right? It's one thing if, if you did it and stayed there. Yeah. As opposed to understanding through maturity mm -hmm. the wrongness. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit will always tell you. It will always guide you. Mm -hmm. It will always let you know when you are doing wrong. When you have come out of the will of God, when you have gone another path, it'll always say, it'll give you the whether I'm feeling, you know, mm -hmm. it'll make it, you know, maybe it'll, you'll second guess yourself, maybe, mm -hmm. you'll start to question and stuff, you know, things don't seem to be right, 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 you know, the Holy Spirit, but through maturity, you know, Repent and be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Ask for forgiveness and be forgiven. And then keep going. Alright? Mm -hmm. And lastly, a sign to a growing Christian is not becoming perfect, but having the desire to grow more. The key to living this Christian life is not necessarily living it in perfection because none of us are perfect, right? Mm -hmm. We're all striving for it, but none of us are perfect. Only God will, you know, make us perfect. Right. The ending will be perfection when we meet him, mm -hmm. right? right? But now we're imperfect. So it's not so much as being perfect as it is in the desire to grow. In the desire to learn more about God and the desire to reestablish ourselves, to reaffirm ourselves in the Christian faith. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -mm. This is wonderful. Is that right? Okay, so, and we won't get to this, the ending part of this, um, which is the instructions for growing a church. Let's see, because it's still all in the same thing. It says, I'll read verse 9. I'll start there. It says, Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own business and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. That's good advice. Good advice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Instructions on how to grow. That's tight, but it's right. Mm -hmm. He says to love one another. Mm -hmm. He says not only that, but continue to do it more and more. Increase in this love. Don't just stay there, but increase in it. More and more. It says to aspire to live quietly. Instead of being a busybody. Live quietly. You know? Quietly. Don't sit up here trying to... No. Yeah, everybody's business trying to stir up trouble. Mm -hmm. Mind All right? your own business. But not only that, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's it right there. Ooh. Mind your own business. Hard to do. And work. And work. All right? And work. That way you don't have to owe anybody. And then you won't that be way worried. nobody can put it, keep it over mm -hmm. your head, mm -hmm. right? And be dependent on no one. That's what that means. And be dependent on no one. The world be such a better place. What it? Man, mind your business, right? Take me back to Rudy Huxtable. Mind your business. Mind your business, <laughs> right? We we wouldn't have a lot of the problems Rudy in the world. Huxtable. Bill Cosby Bill show. Cosby show. Uh-huh. Just mind your business. Man. Because if we are busy minding our business, then we ain't got time to be meddling with somebody, somebody else. else. Right? Amen. If we busy doing what we supposed to do, 
supposed to be doing, then we ain't got time to be sitting up here, you know, meddling in somebody else's. That's a word right there, honey. That's a word. All right? Uh -huh. So we're going to close right there in this discipleship and church growth. So we see in 1 Thessalonians, Paul's, ex Paul's model of growing the church. Mm -hmm. The church first starts with love. Then it starts with holiness. You have to understand your motive for doing all of it. What's the purpose behind all of this? Because we no longer live to ourselves, but we live to God. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, he teaches how to live. Right? Yes. By loving. Here it goes loving again. Mm -hmm. By staying sanctified or set apart. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Right? Mm -hmm. Not only doing it, but doing it more and more. And then minding your own business. That's right. That's Living it. a quiet life. Right? And staring up ruckus. Okay? And then go out and work. Right? Be independent. So that it's not, you know, over you. You don't have to owe anybody. So then you are dependent upon yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was the word right there. I enjoyed this. Thank you all that was coming via Facebook or whatever live that you was on. I thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I thank everyone that was here that came out, you know, didn't count in robbery to come and learn a little bit more. Amen. And I pray that hopefully you have been enlightened and, you know, your mind has been open to understanding the word just a little bit better. Amen. Amen. So as we